Hi guys, it's Paul from Roll Adventures. Uh, I picked up this kick-ass travel oven a little while ago. Uh, so I've probably about the last six months I've been using it to cook food, reheat food, and it's actually saved me from wasting a lot of food while I've been camping. Uh, I was gonna do a review on that today. However, before I could, they've actually come out with a second model, which has a glass door uh, on the front, so you can see what you're cooking. I'll run through the pros and cons of both that I've found, and of course, we'll cook a couple of pies. Okay, so side by side, you can see that both ovens are pretty much identical. The only difference being on this one, you get the clear front door with the handy little light to see what you're cooking. The dimensions on both are exactly the same. Uh, for mounting, you get two of these brackets included. They can either go on the top or base of the oven, depending on where you want to put it. For power, the cable from the back of the oven has a 50 amp Anderson plug. But you also get this little adapter which could go from Anderson to Anderson into your socket, six socket. Um, so if that's your only option, then it's a handy little adapter to have. So just be mindful on both, the heat exhaust is on the right hand side of the door. So if you're gonna position it next to other appliances or devices, just be aware that they will vent a fair bit of heat through those two holes on the side. So probably the thing I cook the most in my 12 volt oven is the good old humble meat pie. I'm gonna turn both of these up to almost full temperature, throw a pie in each, and when we see the one in the glass door is cooked, we'll take both out just for a quick comparison. Uh, along the way, I'll take a few temperature readings around the outside of both, and hopefully that'll give you a bit of insight on where and how you wanna mount the oven if you do get one. Uh, but this is lunch, so I'm gonna throw it in now and see how we go. So after about 40, 45 minutes of cooking, realistically both pies came out pretty much the same. Um, they haven't changed anything with the heating element in the new design. It still draws about 10.3 amps an hour and has a maximum wattage of about 130. Uh, in terms of temperatures, the sides and tops of both were in the early 20s, um, low 20s, 22, 23. The door on the older model held around the same temperatures as the sides in the low 20s, whereas the metal framework around the glass door actually got up a bit higher in sort of 28, 29 degrees. 
surprisingly, the older model, the base, was in the mid 40s. The newer one was still in the low 20s. Just something you could consider if you are going to mount the older one on a flat surface with something that's going to be prone to heat if you've got plastics or anything like that. Um, it's not a massive temperature, but definitely something you should consider. Uh, it, if you're wondering where the other pie went, I actually forgot I kept, had to keep filming and I ate it for lunch. So pros and cons. Um, to be fair, before I go through this list, I have had the older style one for now about six months. It's been used a fair bit. It's been away with me on trips and it pretty much lives in the back of my ute. The tub does have a hard lid over it, but I mean, it does get a bit of moisture in there and a lot of vibration. It's held up, um, never had an issue with it on and off road, um, never blown a fuse or anything, so pretty impressed with this one. This one, however, I've only had for about a week and used it a couple of times. Um, in the future, if I do have any issues with it or find faults or anything else I do like about it, I'll be sure to add them in the comments section down below. So some pros for both of them. I mean, this one, like I said, is very well made. I can't see there being any difference with the newer model. Um, it's super easy to carry around. Like I said, I throw them on the back of the ute. It's never gotten away. It's not a bulky item for the amount of use you're gonna get out of it. Um, like I said, you can cook stuff in it, you can reheat food, pretty much anything you can cook at home in your conventional oven. I mean, realistically, you could probably cook it in this. Both are very lightweight. They're only about six kilos. They're not big and bulky, and they're kinda of easy to move around. This one lives in the back of my ute where it bounces around a fair bit. It's bolted down, I've never had an issue with it. Uh, I take it in and out a fair bit. It's got a 1.5 meter cable with an inline fuse and I've never had an issue with trying to find a connection like an Anderson plug that's close by. Uh, it's a good length of cable without losing too much power over that length. The latch on both is really strong, it's firm. Uh, when you lock it down, the spring recoil's really strong. You're not gonna have any issues with the door coming open. Both are double wall insulated. The reason I went with Kick-Ass over anything else was the walls and front door are both double insulated. Uh, I didn't want to lose any excessive heat and therefore use more power through the front door. So this one was the go for me. Some things to keep in mind, these draw about 10 amps an hour. Depending on what setup you have and what you're using, these are probably going to be more of your power hungry appliances that you've got. So you're going to have to take into consideration how many amps your battery's got and how you're going to recharge that, whether it's through solar or your alternator while you're driving along. These are super handy when you're driving. I said earlier, I use them more so when I'm actually driving to somewhere. That way I've got lunch ready when I get there. I don't have any issues with power because I'm charging through DC DC and the alternator. So in conclusion, and this is obviously my own personal opinion, I think if you're going to spend your days touring off road, going camping, then the newer model is probably the best option for you. Being able to see your food cooking is a great little bonus. You've got the light in there for night time if you need. However, if you're going to go off roads on some decent tracks and you want to take lunch with you or cook when you're out there, this is probably the best option for you. The glass is great. Um, like I said, you can see your food cooking. However, it does add that ad added risk of breaking. If you've got things moving around your canopy or your tub or wherever you're going to store it, you're going to have a lot of vibration off road. Probably not going to, but if you do break that glass, obviously the rest of the oven is useless to you uh, until you replace that door. This, on the other hand, I've tried and tested it and I've never had an issue with it whatsoever. Uh, it's obviously no components in there are going to break too easy like glass is. So I hope you've gotten something out of this video. Uh, I try to keep things nice, short, sweet and to the point. If there's anything I have missed or any questions you have, please feel free to shoot a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, but thanks again for watching and I'll hopefully bring you more soon. Cheers.